Hello and welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Why are you laughing, Scott Morrison? It's very bright. Hello, that's all. <laughs> it's Friday. It is Friday. It's Friday. It's been a really busy week as always. Um, nice to get in the booth again. Do you know what? We may not know this, although the listeners may not know this, but this is our first podcast, I think. Is it? I think so. I've only ever really done it with Martin or James. Oh, I'm popping your cherry there, aren't I, really, in terms of... Uh, you know, Tracy, Tracy and Scott Hubcast. This is exciting. Yeah. It's made me even more excited to do this podcast. It made me even more nervous. <laughs> well, we're going to have a good chat today because um, you did a masterclass this week with some of our HR execs. I did. Who we love working with mm -hmm. because they are really dialed in people in their organizations who, well, they know a lot, but they also really care. So we love working with them about how they can, you know, look at improvements in their organization, um, around the communication elements, around, you know, productivity, all those things. Um, and one of the things that we've had to, well, has been commissioned by a few organizations for us this year was cultural surveys. Sure. And it's been a bit of a discussion point because there's been certain things in the media about certain organizations. So it made us think, didn't it? So you did a masterclass on Wednesday. So Wednesday? Yes, it was Wednesday. Um, Wednesday. Around this subject, um, and you had great interaction with some of the guys that were, were online with you. So we thought, hey, let's actually talk it out because this could be a starting point for some organizational leaders, HR executives, about maybe the benefits to doing one. Um, have they done them before? Could they think about it for next year and what the benefits could be long-term for them? Yeah. Um, and I think, actually, we've got to start with putting it into context, right? Um, some people think they've done the cultural survey. Yeah, so talking to the guys that, that joined me on the on the masterclass, who were all fantastic, by the way, really open, really good for sharing ideas and best practices and, and the things that they were up to at that time. But yeah, I think when we asked the question, what, what surveys have they delivered so far? Mm. What's the function of a cultural survey? What's the function of an engagement survey? As an example, and a lot of them, start with the impression they're going down one route mm. and then maybe it's via the information that they're given that they've researched online things like that mm. but they actually tend to sort of tailor off and go a different way which then doesn't give them the outputs they that they want yeah. or the direction that they want or needed and then when it comes to delivering the the feedback it kind of leaves the employees if you like a little bit jaded on is that the right way has it gone the right way that's not what we thought we were doing so yeah and that tailors the questions as well doesn't it so like um quite often i said when i'm going into an organization having that discussion same things happen to me a dozen times where i've been speaking to an organization or an organizational leaders and i say right have you done this before they say oh yeah 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 and then actually what we end up with is you know that's an engagement survey it, it mm. does feel very different the questions are differently weighted um, you're going to get different, you know, outputs for that. Um, so actually, let's unravel that a little bit today sure. because I think it's a good talking point. So I wrote some stuff down here around why we would do one. Maybe you can chuck a few in here as well. So yeah. um, understanding the diversity in our organisation. Yeah. Um, Decision-making processes, if figuring it out and how that's landing with people. And of course, that leads into communication touch points as well within the organisation. Um <laughs> I guess what I'll put down here with stuff around conflict resolution, like how has certain things landed in the organization? It might be change. It might be problems people have had, how they've yeah. responded. Even how they think leaders have responded sometimes. I think that that's a big thing. Um, yeah, and I guess a lot of the pieces we're putting in there is, I guess, how people feel. If I put it into context, it's how people feel on a Sunday night about going into work on a Monday? Yeah, so I guess when we talk about the engagement function, it's about what does that person feel, you know, you know job opportunities, job security, yeah. how do they feel about their manager, yeah. that type of thing. The engagement side of things is a little bit more we than an individual. It's, yes, yeah. It changes point. towards the, the ethics, the values of an organisation. Are they being listened to? Are they valued? You know, are they seen within the organisation? Yeah. And as a result of right versus wrong, do they feel that like their organization's willing to act on that in accordance uh, to those ethics, point. those values, yeah. those, those things mm -hmm. that are laid out in that culture value. So that's key. So going back to what you just said there, night terrors on a Sunday night <laughs> before Monday mm -hmm. is a great way to measure, as an example, am I enjoying my work culture? Am I enjoying work? Is it mm -hmm. living up to its expectations? I think when we talk about expectations, 
we lay them mainly at the feet of the employee to deliver on their expectations. Yeah. But as an organization, as leaders, as influencers, managers, whichever way you want to look at it, we have a massive, massive um, responsibility See, yeah. to, to deliver in return what that work environment is for these people to come in and mm. enjoy and thrive and grow and yeah. develop and be the, the people that lead our organization forward. Yeah. You know. And it, and I'd, 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 I sometimes think we do need to step back as as leaders or influencers in a business and think about that because um, I think you and I have discussed this before probably on, uh, I think it's on an HR execs actually a long time ago around that misconception of culture like as in, um, you know, some people link it to the rewards and recognition that people get. And we were joking about beanbag generation and like, you know, free coffee in the staff room. And we're like, no, 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 that's yeah. not what it's about. That's fun. That's an additional benefit. Yeah. But that's a thank you, I think. Yeah. That's a thank you if there's, you know, three cans of Coke in the fridge, coffee and teas in the cupboard, yeah. then it's free or it's got a fancy machine, vending machines. Out. That's a thank home comfort you. at work. Yeah, that, that's, that is exactly it. It's, how do I get these people feeling the comforts of home in the workplace to make them feel happy, to mm -hmm. enjoy turning up to work, being better at their job as a result mm -hmm. of being comfortable in what they're doing? Yeah. That's a thank you, definitely. And I think it links what we were discussing the other day was, you know, there's all these reasons why it's, you know, the goals are there is like we want to understand the thoughts and opinions of our people. Mm. We want to understand the diversity. We want to understand how people um, adapt to communication and decision making in the business. We want to understand, I guess, how our value and culture is landing because sometimes people at the top make the decisions around what that value and culture behaviors even look like. Um, and I guess some of the problems we have when we're discussing this in organizations is, is there a disconnect between what that strategic stat looks like from the top level, as in we could all um, in the senior team reflect all those things back, maybe explain them, you know, very simply to all the people, but it's the NASA to the moon scenario. Can the person that's just joined the organization or has a, you know, a, a less influencing job still explain and connect with your culture, values and behaviors? And I think this is really a way of rooting that out because it's, we see this all the time. People cannot relate to the poster on the wall. Yeah, the, the, if you, you should look at the values, say you, your business or any business has, say, five values, that's not the culture. No. But that's a good way to measure how the culture's... And the behaviours sit behind that, right? They, exactly. So. But also what it doesn't look like is just as important, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I think, I think organisations and a lot of managers from past organisations or people I still speak to from mm. other roles, et cetera, I think that's how they judge and measure people you just do, on yeah. these values but but it, that isn't actually it goes beyond that yes isn't it? way more yeah. They're, they're, yeah that surface level to some extent it's what goes on underneath yeah that. sometimes it, i know this might sound silly but it can come down to the individual the person and the personality of what drives that culture as well so 100 percent yeah simple things i, I was away a couple of weeks ago with an organization doing a, a session on leading the team and one of the guys came in late. So we was like, oh, he's always late. Just a bit of banter to make him feel a bit uncomfortable and a bit awkward for, for the jokes <laughs> of it. And, and he said, and he said, right, one second. And he walks past me and goes to the bin. And in the bin, in his hand, he's got, um, he's got just trash, you know, um, cig butts and um, crisp, crisp packets. And he says, there's a smoking area at the front. Mm -hmm. And people who are there are doing their thing, smoking, eating their snacks or whatever, and then just dumping it on the floor and walking off. He's seen that. He's stopped. He's thought about it. He's picked it up. One, yes, for the environment, et cetera. Two, it's how the place looks. But three, the idea of just stopping his day to pick that up, cleaning up after other people, to then go put that in a bit. I know it sounds silly, but that personality, that individual's thought process, that's part of culture. What's the difference can I make? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's how am I thinking outside the box to some extent. Yeah. You know, it's, a small example, but I think that's a great example. That's, that's key. That's imagine if everyone was that connected to their organization that that behavior is normal because uh, it is a small thing. But if everyone did a small thing every day that connected to those cultures and values mm. and behaviors, then the workplace would be so different, wouldn't it? And if we can connect that to communication to yeah. take it a stage further, that's incredible. And I think that's the magic of doing something like this. Now, it's probably wise to say at this point that um, it's like any survey, um, you know, again, just going back to any organization I've ever worked with, um, I've gone in to lead workshops when they've got all the information back from some of their engagement surveys. Um, it makes for uncomfortable listening sometimes because some of it um, is 
yeah, we kind of knew that. And I'm like, okay, so what are you going to do with it? Um, some of it is, oh, that's a shocker. We didn't expect that. And um, you sort of have to think, hmm, if you were listening a bit closer, would you have had an earlier warning about that? Yeah. And then the other side of it is defensiveness. Now, I'm just going to go here. I've been with, um, you know, senior leadership teams that have started to pick fault in some of the feedback and say, well, you know, it's down to them and they're seeing that wrong. And, sure. and, and um, I have to throw it back like you did in the beginning. It's down to us. Like, we're the only ones that can make a difference. So I guess the only time that it's worthwhile doing a survey is if you want to do something about it it because linking this into what where we're going to go with this it links to psychological safety doesn't it massively so yeah. so why why put a survey out there if you don't want to know the answers for a start and if you're not going to do anything with it because this is when i've wrote down here when it goes wrong is um i guess really when you say we're going to listen to you. We appreciate your feedback. Yeah. And then I'm going to bloody ignore it. Or I'm going to justify it. That's even worse. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think what you're saying there, why, why would we do it? But again, some organizations see it as this is something we have to deliver in the year. It's Dude, part of yeah. the process. So you'll have people who will, who will, I want to do it. I want to measure it. I want to understand it. I want to feedback. I want mm. to deliver a certain outcome from the. Got to measure they're, it, haven't they? Bomb. There's one there, but they're like we said. There are some people who do it as a, a tick exercise to say it's been done. These are my percentages. This is what feedback came in. Mm. We asked the question. We talk about psychological safety. I asked the question: mm. What what hinders our surveys? What stops these mm. surveys from being yeah. successful? for the organization, giving us a real route to success of the information we gather. Yeah. Um, and the guys were like, well, death by survey, we've done so many God, in the yeah. past. Yeah. Uh, with no real route or direction or clarity as to what for and why we're doing them. Mm -hmm. Some people will sit there and say, we never feed the information back. So as a result, it's same stuff another day, mm -hmm. if that makes what's sense. The point? Yeah, yeah, what's the point? Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And then you also get it. And we asked the question about, which which section of the employee group are we targeting here? Because True. we've got a number of different variations there. You've got, we talk about um, culture. And when we talk about culture, one of the, the casualties of cultures are our staff. So if the culture is not right, we don't live up to our early promises. That first six months of somebody joining an organization yeah. is paramount. It's key. If we yeah. don't get it right, we'll see them leave Onboarding again. Onboarding has got to be one of the biggest pinch points in an organization. If you don't get it right, and you don't live up to your promises, like you say, then, I mean, turnover. Absolutely, sir. Extra but cost. To me, the cost is what kills people. But the other side of that is, that's not what, the cost kills you in the pocket. Yeah. But these people leaving and word of mouth as to why they're like showing your abuse. reputation. Yes. That showing your reputation. So when, yeah. when you've got organisations talking about, we've got this culture, we live to these values, etc., but they're losing 60, 70% of- Do you though? These, yeah. Yeah. Really? I really, I've been on Glassdoor, so. I've seen your reviews. Right then. And people who feel People's strongly will up. put that on there, won't they? So this is what's important. So when we talk about where do we get it from and what do we do, how do we select our audience? Because we can sit there and go, right, I've put it out, keep it simple. We've got hundred employees and out of a hundred employees, 50% came back to the survey with engagement, with feedback, mm -hmm. and we're happy with that number. But who's, Who's in that number? Is it in your first three months? Is it in your, sec exactly. in your, your second tier or six months? Is it people that have been here for five years and more? Mm. So who are you getting this feedback from? But then there's a level of what that feedback is. How real and how honest is it? Oh, that's the biggest question, isn't it? Because so, where are you in psychological safety? Because you could have, I don't know, pockets of sunshine in that organization that the world's gone great for them this year. They're on target. They're, you know, they're being um, rewarded and recognized. Celebrated. Celebrated. Yeah. You've got, then you've got, I don't know, let's think of like stuff, supply chain stuff that's going on in an organization because it's, it's in turmoil at the moment, supply chain. The supply chain team are feeling a certain way, not feeling supported, not being communicated to, feeling like an outsider. They're going to respond slightly differently. And then what we do is we get these complete opposite end results and then the business leaders are, are confused because they're like well it's like when we do a 360 on someone isn't it yeah. so when we do a 360 on someone you'll get someone who's got like five really great like four out of five great comments and you get one person that just has this thing they've observed in this person and of course the offset is they justify it they go well if five people there said i was a five out of five and that one person says they've got beef with me it must have been their fault 
personal. And it's exactly the same in an organization. You can't necessarily look at that information in the same way. You have to think, right, there's a cross spread of, of different pockets of despair or sunshine in this organization. So we need to target the questions in such a way where actually we're getting an honest opinion and we're averaging it out and we're thinking, how do we use that? Because this is the other thing. It's down to the questions you select. Right. And I'm fully on board with that. But there's a, I think there's a stage that goes before that okay. in relation to it. And, and the simple view of this for me is if we've got 50% of the people engaged, that's 50% that are not. Well, absolutely. Why? So how do we wall the crowd up? How do we communicate with yeah. the crowd? How do we get them... Um, to engage. To, yeah. yeah. How do we get them to listen to what the point is? Mm -hmm. What we're trying to achieve, how do you how do you break that section of the audience down so we can better get them engaged and and being honest? Yeah, we want them to be honest. So we're talking about even if it's brutal, self. we want yes. them to be honest. But this is the point yeah. because what we're saying here is out of the fifty percent that have gone on board, the result that we've got out of that fifty percent is favourable to us. So I'm happy. Mm. When ultimately I'm thinking, what about those quiet quitters over there? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if we know the audience, and like you say, they've been celebrated, they've been rewarded, and et cetera, et cetera, and then the life looks good, their glad path to success is on the increase. Mm. We, we talk about mindsets of people when we, when we deliver our training. What mindsets are sat in that 50%? How do we turn them around? How do we get them involved? Here's my argument on all of this, um, and I've used this before. Um, it's like listening at the walls, isn't it? It's it's about getting early indicators of what you think is going on. If you get these results back and it's a big slap in the pus, mm. <laughs> you've been doing something wrong. That's what I think. Because you can get a survey back and go, oh, I expected some of this. Oh, that's, you know, that's a bit left field. Yeah. But I think if you're good leaders in an organization, you don't even need the pulse therapy. You feel it in the water. It's like, okay, there's definitely a problem here. It might be productivity is down. It might be, you know, employee engagement in terms of, you know, interdepartmental There's a million things yeah. you can measure, so, right? So you kind of get those early indicators. Mm -hmm. But then going back to psychological safety, because I know you and I had a really great chat and debate about this this week. It's like that continuum of um, at this end, people are feeling like, what's the point in speaking up? So I'm just going to smile and wave. So that goes either way. They go, I'll just take average on everything on the survey, put no comments. Switzerland. And, or I won't, I won't turn up. If you're at the other end of the arena where things have been turbulent and people are feeling really, really like angry and, yeah. and angry is the word, isn't it? Angry is, is the right word, frustrated, worried, anxious. Then they are always looking for the negatives or have only experienced the negatives. So the, the survey is always going to be more weighted towards those people who've got. So think about it when you look at reviews. Not many people will believe a review if they're really, really happy unless they're pushed in some situations. But if they're annoyed, they're the first person to be vocal and, and put their opinion. So you get the seesaw of opinions you do, that you yeah. have to get really high or really low. So, so what does your culture look like? What does it encourage? Is it a, a, a culture where you have been in, encouraging people to yeah. look at things, not with a negative hat, but look for problems we can solve? Mm -hmm. I think that's a good way to look at it. Rather than saying, oh my God, there's all these problems. It's like, actually, it's all this thing. Maybe we could improve this. Or have you got a culture where people think, if I speak up, I'm a disruptor? And I look like I've got an individual mindset. No, 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 I haven't got an individual mindset. It just doesn't feel right to me personally. But are we providing the output for an individual discussion on that rather than just putting a survey out there? Are our one-to-ones good enough where we can get that out of that person? Yeah, was... Because that's the early warning radar. And this is that key thing. So when you talk about the individual engagement, you're going to have, you know, T. Roberts, what's your feedback on your supervisor? What's your, yes. You know, how often do you get feedback? How often do Enough they turn up? even do that. Right, yeah. and that's if that happens. Yeah. But then as a result, when you when you put one of these surveys out there, this is when they'll... they'll oh, they'll go to town. Yeah, because <laughs> my leader doesn't do, my leader does yeah. this, my leader doesn't yeah. do that. But this is where, when we're talking about which is the 50% of the audience that is missing, and this could be it. Yeah. Right, or you can have a turn up with a picket fence and, and, you know, be really mad, or... It turns up and or it doesn't turn up because what's the point? And we have to really look at ourselves again, leaders, managers, influencers, about how we we speak to these people, how one to ones, our assessments, you know, even the review of objectives over the year, how are they sitting, where do they yeah. feel, what we're moving forward on, what what's how the are they feeling about everything. What, yeah, yeah, what's their development culture? What are they happy with? 
have, are we still aligned? And what I mean by aligned is, is our, is our journey a shared journey? Why do they turn up to work every day? What's their purpose? What they're looking yeah. at short, medium and long term? And is that a piece of what we're doing as an organization and can we marry the two? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that links up to something that we refer to like the feedback model. Like our, we're on a, a never ending quest here to say to people, um, appraisals one-to-ones that are just a small part of your feedback and the reason why, you know, you manage a good culture. Yeah. You know, um, people say to me, um, we'd love to have a feedback and coaching environment and culture, but we haven't got time for that. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Stop the bus. It's a great excuse. Right? Coaching takes under five minutes in most cases. And coaching doesn't mean just coaching someone to do a task or something like that. Coaching can just be having open communication Mm -hmm. with leading with curiosity and understanding. All people really want is to feel seen, heard and have a journey. And if you've got those three things, you do one of these surveys, you get honest opinions and you can work with it. I mean, some of the stuff that you'll get out of one of these surveys, I wrote them down as well. So identify your key areas areas for improvement, obviously, if you actually want to hear that. (laughs) Develop actionable insights. So sometimes it's about um, determining clear steps or addressing issues and actually providing that data back to your organization to go, right, let's be really transparent about this. This is what we need to do. Um, Communication transparency. You want people to feel free. You can tailor your training and development programs, which is what you were saying. It can be individual. It can be there's a complete disconnect between certain things across the you know the horizon of everyone in that survey okay we need to do that as a, a group thing but there also can be pockets that we need to tailor for um adjusting your policies and practices so even in this day and age how often do we really revisit those things not just for, for dei purposes but just fit for purpose you know our policy could be really outdated and frustrating people in the organization um promote uh, promoting inclusive leadership goes without saying um, and establish employee resource groups. I like that one because what we can do is we can draw that information down and go, okay, how do we hand the power back to some of our people and get them involved a little bit more? And that's a great point. And that came up in the conversation the other day on the on, on the session about this with mm. the HR execs. And we sort of said, right, we do work with some people that are all positive go-getters that I like to be in the mix. I want to do yes. a bit more. And, you know, we, we talked about hints and tips to making this something that, can be measurable via those people. So we talked about um, a culture committee. Mm. Who are our champions yes. in the business place? Culture carriers. Right. So who, yeah. who, because everybody's responsible for culture, but unless somebody's the spearhead in it, no one's responsible yeah. for it. If, that, if no one's feeding back and bringing these things in. Now, what we also said was, when we talked about the culture, one of the key problems a lot of organizations have is mm. they'll read something online They'll see a stage of one, two, three, four, five to deliver culture and they'll do that. But cultures are It's two way, isn't it? Well, no, but it's not just that, but it, it, not one size fits at all. And one of the things we said was, well, what's your culture as a business? So if I was to ask you, you know, where did you start? Where are you going? Mm. What's your journey so far? What's your achievements? What trophies have you received? Who are your people? What's your people experience? You know, yep. what's your driving story to success? Yep. What motivates you? Why yes. do you employ the people you employ? Why do they stay? Mm. Do If I sat there and looked at your walls and the photos that sort of follow your journey from day one, I mean, I was in this room looking that way and I utilised the wall there in front of us and on the wall we've got pictures of Martin in his first session delivering to an audience. We spoke about it a few months ago and he said he was absolutely petrified, nervous. I was in that audience, you know, looking back at him, watching what he was doing. But there's his journey and he goes all the way from that photo, all the way through. And he connects with that emotionally as well. Absolutely, but it yeah. goes all the way through to the latest retreat we did, which is, you know, which was a new tool, a new thing. And yeah. this is what we, we've been aspiring to. So there's a journey and you can see that just in there. There's an award shelf with what we've done and how we've achieved and how so we've got there. So people want to feel that like they're part of that. And that part of that then, so that celebrating like cultural awareness initiatives, fostering open open dialogue. And then it probably links into that point, monitor progress and reassess. So going back to the wall, like mm-hmm. the pictures don't stop. We've, no. got to, we've got to go, right, that's where we were. So where are we going next? Well, a year from now, yeah. we'll have the journey between the last retreat and our next retreat. 
So and in an organisation, it's no different, is it? Right. It's, so people so, are now seeing a storyline. There's a yes. storyline. There's a there's a there's a there's a story page, but it's something that people can now follow. Yes. And is that in line with who we are? You know, when we look at it now, as an example, I said, right, who's your Scott Morrison in said department that was there when it was two people, now there when there's fifty people and he's managing, etc. You know, and how's your shifted in that time? Right. Who's your yeah. Who's your Claire Longthorne? Who's yeah. your Spencer yeah. Lockers? Who are these people that were there from the get go, moving through to open the doors, to, yeah. to create the growth for people like you and I to now be part of this. Journey. So that then then leans into like you know, you've got to take this information. And um, one of the last points on that point there was it's there for leadership accountability. So once we've got that back, we then got to go okay, how do we tear this apart and work out what we need to, to focus on first? So um, we start with our big rocks and, and move down and we think what's controllable right now yeah. that we can go to our three circles. What's within our control? What's within our influence? And what is just too far out and in concern right now that we actually need to probably put a long-term plan together on? But I guess where these surveys are, are not managed correctly, this is where it all goes wrong. We look at the survey as a leadership team. We see a couple of quick fixes. Like you say, we, we read what we can adjust and then we just make that change. And then we go back next year and we're maybe a little bit, oh, why is the dial not moved on that? Oh, mm. that one has moved. So a point that I was uh, talking with an organization about this week was, um, I think their, their average, let's say it was like 85% they were aiming for was their gold standard in sure. all of their areas. Um, and one of the guys in the session was just so good at seeing things from a slightly different angle. And um, the rest of the organization that were in there were like, right, these are all great. And we're over and we've gone up eight points from last year and dollar. But he was looking at it with another set of eyes. He was saying, well, hang on a minute. That's still 80%. Yeah, so you might the, think that's good. So what's what have we done? Yeah. yeah. And then, and then, okay, we've got a big gap, uh, a big movement from there to there. What did, what energy did we put into that to make the difference? Why is there ver verbatim? And this is the other thing about these um, surveys. I'm just going to say it. Verbatim is everything. Like you can get a sliding scale or a number and you can go, great. Right. Question for you. When you get your... Is this an actual question for you? Yeah, actual you, question right? for okay. you, right? So um, I target you with a certain uh, a sort of like feedback figures, if you like, for your sessions. Yeah. And the first thing you do, because that's the way you are, <laughs> when you finish a session and I say to you, Scott, how was that? Is go... It was all right, but I could have done X. And I'm like, Scott, you probably smashed it. But you go, let me see the scores. So you'll go on. And even if you get way over what I ask you to do, you're still scrolling down. I go down to what? For the do. comments. Yes. Why? Why do you do that? Because I want to see what's landed. And in it, there's, there's, there's a section in there. Not everybody fills it in, etc. But there's a part where he says, what were your takeaways? Mm. Now, I, yes. I can be, I can have a personality, I can have a flair and I can mm -hmm. be, I have a sense of humor and I can really, you know, I can hold my audience if you like. Yeah. yeah. But ultimately, what's my job? My job's to educate. It's going to last. My job's to influence and yeah. land these points that we're talking about for them mm -hmm. and for the organization to move forward. It's yeah. that learning curve, right? Same so, thing. Exactly. So we, we, we look at certain things within our day. What might that be? And we can use ABC, we can look at our... Oh, we can look at the social profile. Well, there's a million things that we look at, but there's things that we talk about. And if we've landed them and we can see them in the points, I know I've held their ear, not just their sense of humor or their interest. Their, their, They're compelled to act. They've listened to me. Yeah. They've not just heard me, they've actually listened to what yeah. I've said. So when I, when I say, you know, if the scores are five, fantastic, that's great. If the scores are four, point. yeah, scores are four, all right. But I want to come down. I want to see. Now, if the four says, if it says four as a score, not where I want to be. But the if, feedback. If the feedback covers all of them, I'll take the I'll take the comments over the score because I know it's landed. Exactly the all point day. I'm trying to land on. And I'm I'm with you. You know, initially when you start to um, facilitate new content, yeah. all you want to do is get through the content because you're like, right, I, I want I just want to make sure the flow is right, the link and flow feels good, they're having a good time because that's super important. But once you've kind of nailed those first few sessions, you go, right, now I really want to challenge myself as a facilitator because I really want to land this. I want them to walk out of here compelled to act. Yeah. Now, there's no difference between the way you see that and the way that we should be looking at a cultural survey. Yeah. We should be looking at that cultural survey saying, right, I want I want to feel compelled to act on this information. I want to read that and say, that's a true reflection of how someone feels. And I always say this, you know, we're all built differently. Some of us more emotional than others. 
Um, but the reality is, if that is their truth, that is their truth. So we have to accept that and think, right, what's controllable and what's under our influence and how can we make it work? Because if we don't do that, this is what happens. More lack of trust. Sure. Um, increased discontent. Uh, misinterpretation of the results. I think that's an interesting one. So even in leadership teams that are reading it and reading it in their own way, as I said, oh, 80%, great. Well, no, that's still 80% from last year. That could be 90 or 95% now. Or it could be that the way you question doesn't quite cover all the points. Um, resistance to change, right? We don't get this right. We increase our chances of that. And we all know that in a lot of organizations, particularly in the last few years, we're in flux. So that is a problem. Um, cultural backlash, massively. Communication breakdown, probably 50% of our job is dealing with that. Um, and increased turnover. So all the things that you want to find out about mm. is the byproduct of you getting this survey wrong. So I guess the point we're trying to land there is if you're going to do it, it's going to really lead to all these amazing things that you can do in, you, in your environment that you're in and you, to change the culture and to retain your people and ensure there's open communication. But if you just take it at face value and think, great, tick in the box, it's going to make that worse. You're going to have the opposite effect in your organization. Now, this is us not trying to like fear people into avoiding doing this. We still think this is a really, really valuable thing. We do it for many organizations. But what are you going to do with it? This information can change, I don't know, change your the way you do things at work. It can make your people happy and it can make them stay longer. When we think about HR, to me, for, for something like this, they have a big role. When we talk about values, cultures, et cetera, because they're... They're our moral compass, if you like. They they have to stay independent. They have to stay. They have to stay switch and neutral to what's going on. Yes. But but with the best intention for the organisation, these people to grow and move forward, right? So, mm -hmm. when I did this with them, one of the questions, and I can't remember the exact question, but I asked a question, and and it led to, um, sort of showing how the scores are great, but we used percentages, um, and I won't say who it was from which organisation, but. Uh, a lady was really astute and said, hang on a minute, Scott, we've, we've, we've highlighted that, but shouldn't we be looking in the other way as well? And I was like, 100% we should. So if we're looking at the 80%, what have we missed with the 20%? Yeah. What Again, one, why are they engaged? And that could be a big rock that you could move quickly. Exactly. How is yeah. that question worded for them to sit there and go, no, I'm not getting involved in that. So it's, it's measuring how we improve on that 20%, yeah. that's that's not there. That's that's yeah. the key function. So how do we reverse engineer that? What do we find what's wrong? You've got to put actions to each of these things. So if you've got something that's at 95, you've got to put something in place in terms of, you know, goal setting that is how do we keep that, but also where's the marginal gain? If it's something incredibly low, that's something that needs immediate attention. So that's got to be time bound, doesn't it? Yeah. Go back to the old smart objectives. There's a million different ways to do it now, but... Um, and you're right, we need to re-measure that. And I would say that the people who do this right, they kind of have a way of, of, of some way of measuring the metrics across the year before they even get to the yeah. survey. So they'll revisit and say, where do we think we are with this? And the other thing is, as a team of people, it's not just, this is the thing that bothers me, you know, and I'm saying this for all my HR um, uh, peeps out there. Um, <laughs> you know, we have got mass respect for you guys because you have so many things to consider and you're doing the best for the organization, for the individuals, for the leadership, because you've got to support them. But um, it's everybody's responsibility to get this right. Yeah. So you can be a, a big part of that, but culture is everyone's responsibility. Yeah. But, Mordens. yes, That's but the leadership team are the ones who cast the shadow. So we've got to be in that room deciding how we get yeah, massive shadow, shadow like yeah. Grim, Grim Reaper, if you don't get it right, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. So um, we've got to take responsibility. Um, the HR team do a great job of, of kind of leading on a lot of this stuff, but essentially they should be there, like you said, to warden it and, and to sort of maybe be that person. Uh, when I was working with a team at, at Reckitts this week, uh, the HR uh, lead that was in there was fantastic at this, stood at the back, let them all discuss certain things and then just leaned in from time to time and said, have you considered this? Or here's some insight I have on people's mindset on this. And this is what the trend is right now. And I love that approach because it allowed the team to think for themselves as a leadership team, but also he was able to just give them a little nudge from time to time. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? When it comes to the goal setting part, what he was good at was saying, 
let's just link in. There's there's actions there. Let's just think of is there a way to make that more peopley? So that's it. And what when it meant they do was that, they go straight to result. Though, yeah, right. But that's a good thing because they'll say, well, we'll fix that process. But what he was saying initially was, I love that. However, could we consider how we would land that? And then it came back to our communications plan. So it wasn't just about the change. It was about Let's look, let's think of all the stakeholders involved. Yeah, how that information will land with them. How we're going to communicate communicate it differently. Uh, we even got into a big discussion around transparency horizons. Like you know, for for certain organisations, the reason that you get low psychological safety is because they imagine in their head that things are concealed. That's a big word, isn't it? Mm. Um, and what we were saying was. Um, if there's zero transparency on certain things in an organization, it's for a reason usually. So they were using an example of, as a leader, certain things we're not allowed to let out in the public domain until it's absolutely signed off. Um, and then when, as we went up the horizon, it went to, you know, lack of transparency or whatever it might be. Yeah. And they were saying, and I said, this is the point where you get problems because people are assuming you're hiding things from them. And you're not. It's just that there's certain things where if you communicated properly as a leader and you say, listen, I can't tell you these things for a reason. If you've got a high level of trust and rapport with those people, they go, I got your skips, don't worry. I know you'll tell me when you can. And then we go up to, you know, a bit more clarity and people are like, okay, I don't need to know all the details, but I trust that you'll tell me when you can. And I think that that really helped them understand yeah, do you know what? I think in our organization, the underbelly, the lack of psychological safety sometimes is because they assume something's coming and we're hiding it from them. Yeah, but that's something that's coming as negative. That's yes, the man's and, and they assume that the leaders all know these things and not telling them. In advance. But think about organizations you've been at where that has been the case, Scott. Mm. If you trust your boss or trust your leaders, um, you know there's a reason they can't tell you yet. And then when they do tell you, they say, I'm telling you everything I know that I am allowed to tell you about this time. And that's because of the communication and the journey of being yeah. with them. They share so much with you. So yeah. you know what your knowledge is power. So they'll give you as much as they can possibly give. It's a simple But they're being be clear on that and yeah. you trust them. Yeah. And so we were talking about like full transparency zero and we were saying the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle, but that, that concealed feel is what can affect something like this type of survey because they think, well, I just feel like always there's something in the background, something brewing. And as you know, as we know with personality types, there are some people who have got that spidey sense and it's either really, really a good spidey sense it's or it's, it's overthinker. Yeah. Or it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it's conspiracy um, theorist. Yes. Either way. And if you were too like me, then that's normally the case. Um, <laughs> but as a consequence of that, then of course, there's this underbelly all the time of this lack of psychological safety because you're kind of second guessing what's going on. So as a leader, you've got to pick up on that mm. and be clear. And one of the leaders in the room on Wednesday said, look, how I communicate that is, look, there are certain things I can't tell you for logistical reasons or, I don't know, uh, you know, stuff hasn't been signed off, whatever it is, but I am always going to tell you the level that I can tell you at the time. Yeah. Trust me that I'm going to do that. But to have that relationship with your team, you've got to have really thought of all this cultural piece and thought, right, how am I going to communicate effectively? How do I make sure I lower my rank to come alongside them from time to time to make them feel like I'm really taking them on the journey? I'm not just that leader at the top who knows all this stuff and I'm, you know, I'm not telling you yet. Yeah. I really can't. I, I'm communicating in a clear way. Taking that concealed bit out of that horizon is massively important because it's, it's better to have zero transparency but to understand why than to have concealed feel in a business. That's my take on it. So, I don't know, it made them really think about things differently and then when they were looking at their survey results, they were sort of able to connect why some people's perceptions were a certain way because some of us are analytical and we want to know all the facts. So we think as analytical people, we want to know full transparency. But as soon as you get over there, that's overwhelming. <laughs> and that's the reason why we don't tell everybody everything all the time. There's a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. However, if you're someone who wants to break things down piece by piece, being a little bit more towards center is a good thing. You're spoon fed the information at the time to make great decisions, but you have full trust that the organization has you back. And I think people need to think about that because again, this is something that can affect the feedback that you have within your surveys. Yeah, so... When we, when we talk about leading the team, we, we, we go into this and yeah. we do the survey and there's a list of questions and they come out in various places. And, and one of the one of the phrases is that uh, I trust and I follow. Yes, and I love that expression. Right. Yeah. So I gave an example of when I joined this organization yes. in this business and, and I said that it was at an early stage and it was a, a session with a company called City Plumbing Highborn and they asked me what my thoughts were. So I sat with them and I went through the mm. situation with them as they was doing it. So I did it as yeah. well as them. And I explained my my position at that time with, 
I haven't been here long enough to fully have all of the answers. I haven't been here long enough to be renegade and go in the opposite direction. But mm -hmm. what I must have, I've been brought into this business to do a job. I've been brought in this business to to help support and secure yeah. the future of the organization, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah, yeah. So ultimately, why would I think this organization has brought me in for me to then fail? Yeah. So the idea in that that function in that leadership at the time and built so, on those early relationships with us, yes. thinking, I, yeah, these guys have got so, my back, right? Relationships with you, Lydia, Claire, obviously Martin, etc. My my goal in that stage of answering questions when I came to it and I sat down and just reflected for 10, 15 seconds was they won't bring me in if they wanted me to fail. They'd mm -hmm. leave me out in the cold. So they're bringing me in because. They want me to succeed. So you've got to think about everything in, in the best yeah. intention way, if that makes sense. So this is where some of these... Then you build on that. And then you start to give. Right. And so that's then, where it flips. So we move from the other side where I contribute, but I don't trust. But now I'm in the position where I do contribute. I'm, mm -hmm. I feel as I have a place at the table. I'm in with a team. Yeah. I know the team. I'm no longer the la the, the latest addition yes. to the team. I'm probably well, you're all at school now. I mean, yeah. this is it now. Yeah. I'm way in. I'm deep in the game. So it's what I am. But <laughs> the point being here is my, my full dynamic has changed in that function. So from I trust and follow to I have complete psychological safety that if I'm asked a question, it's because someone wants to hear my answer. If I'm not asked a question, it's because I'm not able to give something to yeah. answer that at that time. But the you were sort of holding back slightly, thinking, let me build. I've got the trust because I think these people yeah. have got my best interest. And I know I've got a bit of freedom, but I don't want to take it yet because I'm a little bit fearful that I might go in the wrong direction. But then once you get past that certain point, as long as the trust is super high and you can see people have got your back, then all of a sudden things shift and, and then the hand goes up and then the ideas start flowing. Listen, and that's the sweet spot, right? I ask everybody questions now. Uh, so oh, don't I know it? Yeah, well, yeah, don't <laughs> When well, uh, he says quick one. Yeah, uh, quick one. But then even <laughs> An hour later. We're in the room and I'll say, right, question for the room. Because essentially I'm open to the fact that anyone can know the answer to this. I just You're curious. Don't that. Yeah. Curiosity so, is question. a big thing, isn't it? And I've got a different age range. I've got a different cultural upbringing. I've got different... So all of this is in the office. So one person might not have the exact answer, but between the four outcomes that I get, I can sit mm -hmm. there and find the middle ground and go, that's what I needed. Bosh. I think that's a really good point. And I think a lot of people, if they're if they're listening to this conversation, probably picking little snippets out, mm. but maybe have a little think about psychological safety um, and the different dynamics in your organization. Man, and, 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 yeah, and, and as you said earlier, if you've got a lot of new people in, if you've got it right, they're in trust and follow because they they can pick up on that instinct straight away and go, I don't know these people well enough yet, but I think they've got my best intent at mm. heart. Um, I feel supportive because I've had a really good on the day. Faith with trust yeah, of at the beginning from both sides. But in the first 30 to 90 days, if you don't feel supported, you're getting no feedback. Yeah. Um, there's no follow through. So there's no place. consequence to getting things wrong. All those things. We always talk about that, you know, the ruinous empathy side of things. Then, of course, then long term, you're just going to feel discarded. So... Um, all really good points. Maybe time to revisit that conversation, you know, around your psychological safety and how you measure that because it is directly linked to this, isn't it? So, right. So we've we've covered loads. Um, loads of food for thought there. Do you, I think you landed on like a couple of key points at the end of your session. Do you think it's worth sharing some of those? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure how much time we've got to go into the deep depths of all of them. Just, but just quick overview and then if people want to find well i'll throw it out there i'll talk yeah. about the title of what these different sections are and then if, if that f forms a question or yes. I, I know where this goes then we can do that so ultimately when when we talk about the cultural survey or listen any surveys that you're doing we need to understand and determine and communicate the purpose of what this survey yes. is about what is this for what is the benefit how does this Honestly, you. what is the benefit? Yes, honestly, yeah. was and how does this impact you? How does your engagement allow us to move forward and improve on your current mm. cultural working environment? It's about giving them that. It's warming the room to what we're doing. It's yeah. not going in cold and go. There's a survey, fill it in. No, it's like your feedback actually matters because of this. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. And it, and and in that, in that. To be heard and to see that outcome, that opinion, that thought shared when it goes back into an engagement session afterwards about have we landed this right? Do we understand these yeah. questions? Because you will go back into the group to make sure these are the key points to move forward with. Yeah. 
So we looked at that and and that's a, obviously I think that's a massive thing. Oh, massive. Warm massive. the room to what's going on. Don't leave them cold. Don't leave them guessing. Let's let's build their trust yeah. on the way and understand what it's about. Yeah. The second one comes down and we, we've mentioned about how important the HR are in these type of things. But the key function here as well is to prepare our leaders to receive the results. You mentioned that's earlier. a juicy one. Listen, you mentioned earlier. Got to be ready for that shock, you, but also open. Yes, listen. You mentioned earlier on how when if it's in them three months and you know, well, Scott's my direct report. I've not had a one to one. Mm. Uh, I've approached him twice. He's he's closed me. All of those bad things that can come in there if you're they that help. right. So when we think about how do we prepare our leaders for this, it's the communication that's key. It's like. How do we best receive it? Collaboration is key, not challenge. Yeah. We know that. Yep. Let's keep the chimp out of there. Let's communicate openly. Let's be effective in that. Are we open-minded? How do we receive it for starters? Yeah. Are we are we using investigation questions? Are we curious about why this person thinks this about Exactly. This and not finger pointing. Yeah. It's not a case of you, yeah. me, me, and I'm going to win because I have a position yeah. or, or title. Yeah. That's not what it's about. It's about being open-minded and understanding. We know from the social styles and you know psych evaluations that we've done, an eight three in the same room as a one five as an example, just by being in the same room can ruffle feathers. That's mm -hmm. without communication. It's body language, it's energy level. Absolutely. It's, so we need to understand it's got to not reset personal, right? Yeah. It's let's understand it. So there's that. But then also on, on receiving that type of communication, how are we listening? Are we actually listening? This is the yeah. point. Or are how we are picking we out the things we think are important? Right. And how many times have we done that? Or when someone says a problem, how do we go to the quick fix? We don't actually listen to the the, the problem in its entirety. Yeah. Right. So all of that yeah. key yeah. there. So ultimately, that is how the leader can be involved. Okay. So how do we communicate the results as point three? Great point. Because so how, stick, stick a PDF out is not the way to do it. Um, and you've got to be willing to share the good and the bad. So I've, I've witnessed these in the past and because the groups are so big or the employee base is so big, it comes out in an email, it comes out in a percentage, it comes out in... Woo, welcome, look, look best place thing. to work ever. Look, yeah, and people are like, what? So, you know, how can we do it? We discussed the other day on the phone, on the phone, on the, in the exec session, like how... Yeah. Do we do it in small groups? Are there engagement sessions? Do we section oh, it up? Point. Yeah. Do we section off via tenure, short term, medium term, long term? How do we impact that? Because you can then actually give some of the feedback from that set to the right audience. And have thought about, so this is how I saw it at one of the organizations I worked, like almost assumed our FAQs page before we went to deliver that. Mm -hmm. So when you deliver it, you've already thought through some of the, the solutions or the things that are going to be put in place or considerations so that when you go out and deliver that message, you're not going to get a barrage of abuse, basically, or artificial harmony. We feel great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Absolutely. Great. But the, the, again, in, in that delivery of what that is, be honest. Yeah. So, you know, lead with your strengths, lead with the wins. But then put a framework around what we do next. With, with Daisy. With, yeah. yeah, with those things that we're not quite reaching the levels of expectation from the employee base, the, the learnings that they've put in there, their ideas, their, their, their yeah, thought process. Yeah, what they'd process, like to see. What yeah. they like, whether you use a stop start continuing that process. Yes. And, and, you know, kept it basic because then you can smart, yeah. you can use the measurements as to yeah. what's real, what can we change, what are your quick wins, how do we do and it? what can't we change? And what, and what listen, we're it's, adult, we're in a we're in a stuff wagon, in there, isn't there? It's like when we're talking about rule alignment with our organisational stuff around print, it's like certain things are just going to absolutely trigger the hell out of you as an individual. Um, and certain things cannot be avoided because it's the resource, it's the rules and regulations. And even then, there's a different way to land that with people in terms yeah. of our communication, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great. So what was next? So uh, the next function then is... Uh, okay. So what who's going to own it? Take? Yeah. Right. Who's okay. owning it? What are the actions? What are the time frames? How do we put that out there? And th this can be done, again... Culture is not a one size fits all. You could be a small organization, you could be a massive yep. organization. The key the key understanding here is how do I keep my people engaged in this journey? And who's driving it? And who's driving it? And so, who's gonna tell us when it's going off track and put it back on track? So this for me is one of them where do we use champions? Do we use a culture committee? Do we have a shared shared role, a shared journey between management leaders, influencers mm. within 
the employee leaders and influencers, the on the ground yeah. influencers. How do we get that message across? Who do we choose? You know, could you pick somebody who's walked through the door with a little bit of something about them, a character, a personality, someone who's got, you know, a little bit of energy to move things forward? Then do we pick a medium turn? Then when do we pick our, you know, superstars that have been here for years? How do you how do you encapsulate that group? And yes. bring them all in there. So, you know, what are the actions? What are the quick fixes? You know, what are the long terms? And as you said a moment ago, what are the realities of working in the grown up world? And we have to work this way. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to swallow How can this. we tweak something yeah. to make it not perfect, but Absolutely. palatable maybe? Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's the key thing. So how do we do that? What will change? What will change? Yeah. What's going to be happening in the short term? What's going to be a longer term fix? But like you say, to feed that back, them storytellers that that influence the on the ground group, they they're key in this because oh, yeah, we everybody so. on point and the journey starts. But they can make or break you if it's not managed correctly, right? So that's why you've got to be conscious of that. Right. And this is why it needs so. to be a shared journey too. But then that goes to the final point, which sort of is an e- an elongated version of that, which is regularly communicate the process and the progress that you've got. So when, yes. how often do we go back into the workforce and say, right, guys, this is where we was all January. This is what we've done. This is where we are now. Yeah. What we've done between this journey and that journey, you know, what's the, what's the roadmap to success? What does it look like so far? What are we delivering on and what we're falling behind on? As a result yeah. of what we're falling behind on, why? Yeah. Well, this is what we're doing, but maybe it's a case of we've got the wrong people doing this. How can I put this back and give you a bit of accountability, responsibility to make that journey slightly different from your side to help us get over this obstacle, get around this obstacle, yes, get under this obstacle, course. right? So it's, again, it's, it's, that, it's that ever back and forth of keeping these guys informed to trust them with the information that we can give trust them. Trust is the word of the day. Yeah, that we can give them. And, and that journey just evolved. Yeah. But like you say, when we talk about O as an example, it's, it's the responsibility. Ownership, actions, timeframes for everything. Exactly. You know, absolutely something similar to that, like a working document with, you know, uh, people being assigned responsibilities, a timeline, a Gantt chart even as to like when things are going to be completed. Oh, like, listen, the same. Keep it simple. Yes, yeah, listen, the same way we've got pictures on the wall, you know. Tell a story through your data. This is it. So, yeah. But let's put it somewhere where it's safe. So if there's a, a communal area or whatever, you know, you put that in there. You, if you've got a wall that celebrates employees of the month, employees of the quarter, employees of the year, then this type of information goes front and yeah. center, right alongside that, because this is what we should be celebrating. It should be culture. like, you said we did, you know, like what they did in shops. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit like the that. The crazy thing is, when we talk about culture, ultimately, if you've got a great culture and you're delivering it well, your staff, your employees will burst about it. They will. They're, they'll be, bring people to you. You will they? become an employer of choice. Yeah. Not an and employer that's what of need. Be. And that's where we Everyone need. Everyone needs to strive to be that. Those right. Well, that's Surely. the function of what we should be delivering. Absolutely. And if we can yeah. get that right. So when we're talking about this, our, so this is, is a question for those people listening in relation to culture. Do our employees burst about who we are, our environment, what we do, how we live, our ethics, our values, you know, our our coat of armour. Would they recommend that? someone in the family Would to they bring work their here? Their family, their best yeah. friends. Would they bring them into this organisation, yeah. or Would does they our steer clear? Or does our culture give them night terrors? Heebie-jeebies. Yeah. That's what we say in Scotland, heebie-jeebies. The heebie-jeebies. <laughs> yeah, the night before. Is it, is it a 50-50? The night before, I yeah. whether they're even going to come into work as a result of what we're not created. Because we, we, we need to create a safe um environment where people feel like seen heard on a journey um and this information is seen, key. Heard, valued it's oh yeah huge value to know that i'm coming to work to make a difference to make a difference yeah i'm connected with the bigger goals of that organization as well as my own you know journey i yeah. think that's massively important so great discussion i think that a lot of people will be um taking some food for thought away from that i'd like to think so anyway yeah. um if any of our uh you know hub uh, listeners, uh, viewers um, are interested in talking more about this. You know, we can support on cultural surveys, psychological safety surveys, yeah. um, and we're definitely um, there to give support in terms of you know what kind of questions you would ask, how to use it, 
um, and even project planning with people if they're looking to do stuff like that. So um, it doesn't just end through our education and our, and our thought uh, leadership articles that we write. It's around how we can actually help you embed that. So if you're interested in finding out more, then please reach out and we'll yeah, be able to free to, to chat to who, them. Who've got best practices, you know, what, what their speak. journey was and how it went and what it did. In, in what yeah, tell us your stories. That would tell be great. It, yeah, it's yeah. Not about what they need. It's also, let, let's let's celebrate some things. Yes. You know, how do we get on board to support that? Because some people absolutely smash this and mm. it would be really great to, to you know celebrate that more openly, wouldn't it? So thanks, Scott. Enjoy the chat. And thank you to the viewers and the listeners. We will see you again soon for another T2 Hubcast. Mm-hmm.